Today on the show, actually, welcome to Watching Complain. That's what you should have said in the first place, but now that you didn't, people are going to be like, what the fuck show am I watching? And they've already turned it off, didn't know it was us. This is a book club-like show for movies and television. It is? Yeah. So if they happen to watch Quantumania... I just finished a 560-page book. It wasn't about fucking ants, that's for goddamn sure. I read, unlike some people. The only book you've... Should should wrestling say? books? My Playboy? Penthouse? Letters? Mein Kampf! Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Today on the show, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Beatlemania. The third installment of the Ant-Man sure. series. Made by Marvel and Quentin Tarantino. No, that's not true. Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> you imagine it'd be a lot of ant feet. <laughs> so, Rob, for those who don't want a spoiler right away in the show... You came to the wrong show. But uh, how, generally, what is your feel of this movie? This movie stinks. <laughs> and I had a massive epiphany while watching this movie. Don't you always? It was that, and this is not a spoiler in any way, but you know how we were, the audience all got bored with phase four, I guess, which was the last one. Yeah. Loki and fucking. Uh, uh, You're Ms. the Marvel only one who didn't like Loki. Shit. Everybody was got bored. And, and, and all the reviews for it, everyone was like, this is boring. I don't care. I think that boredom has finally fought up with the people, finally caught up, sorry, with the people that are making this movie. Because uh, this movie seems like everybody who was working in it, the director, the writers, the actors, everyone is bored to tears. Uh, everyone except for John Majors, right? Jonathan Majors was doing his best with that role. Mm -hmm. He was trying it, uh, in my opinion, he was trying it in a way that it, it is not traditionally uh, the, the top henchman, the top bad guy. I feel like everyone was on Bill Murray's level. <laughs> like, yeah. Gen just, generally Bill Murray's I, I level. Don't, I don't care if I'm here. Uh, I and I heard a, a great uh, another podcast this? that I listened to that they're like you know what the biggest problem is with these Marvel movie now is, uh, Marvel movies now I'm forgetting how to speak how to alliterate but um, they've got them in a big green room and it's just like hey yeah. a bunch of ants are over there you're like oh ants but there's nothing physical that you can touch or you can interact well, there, with there there is a, a lot of times something, a lot of the times there's not but... though. And, yeah. and it's it's. I get what you're saying, though. It takes and away. I think the them directors are uh, sorry. The actors are just tired of it. Yeah, you know, and that's what it felt like. As I'm watching this movie, Paul Rudd is not his usually usually plucky self. Um, Michael Douglas could absolutely give a shit to be there. The only person that I felt like was trying to do something. I can't say with certainty that it worked, but he's trying something until the end, which was a laughable nightmare. But. I'll, I'll, I'll say that till we all laugh at it. Uh, it was Jonathan Majors. He's trying something, man. There's, you know? there's, there's definitely something what, what, to what you're saying. It's, it's that, it's, it's that per, what do you call it? That production room, that, that green, green. wraparound green screen. Yeah. It, it's, the wraparound. It's a, a wonderful invention. It is great when you need to use it, but I, I don't get Relying on it for all your scenes yeah. is lazy as fuck. I, I also don't get how you make a movie cost like $300 million and it's a bunch of actors in a green room. I mean, granted, you need to pay all the, 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 the it's, small it's all CG of CG guys that you yeah. hired, but it's like, how the flying Which fuck even does that this was, cost $300,000 or $300 million? That was dumbed down. From what I heard, uh, someone was say, someone from the CG department was saying to someone that all the money went to Black, Black Panther. Yep. And so Ant-Man, in like comparison, got far Shelved. less than... Yeah. And they, they also said that even the director didn't give them any directions on how to do certain scenes. So they were like, dude, just do what feels right. And they were fucking doing it themselves. Yeah, we this, need to this, get back to basics. Th no, this these Marvel movies... And I've, I got this in my notes, so maybe I'll cover them. But these Marvel movies are now complete committee thinking. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Maybe some people love committee thinking. They're complete committee thinking. They're completely devoid of any sort of artistic merit, and uh, they they've started going the DC route. I guess well, that's almost a perfect analogy in terms of if you think about the CW shows. I believe shows. you mean an antology. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Uh, if you think about the CW shows where they get kind of popular, they work their butt off, and then after they get popular, they just lax. Yeah, they're just like, hey, let's just ride it out in syndication. Like watch last season of Flash, or even The Walking Dead would be a great example. Oh, man, The Walking Dead is just, awful. They just, it's almost like once they hit syndication it. in season five, they're just like, eh, whatever. We you know, have, you're going to show up anyway just for the fucking name recognition. We have Negan. Whatever. <sighs> you know, and even, I remember reading the comic, because I read the comic book, because I'm cool. I read the comic. But when the Negan character shows up, I'm like, this character is stupid. Like, it's just, it feels like, you know when you're 14 and you want to swear as much as humanly possible because it's cool to swear and you're not allowed to swear? That's what Negan is. And so the whole time I'm, I'm, I'm uh, reading the, the Negan, Negan in the comic book, I'm like, this is dumb. And then it goes into, he goes off on his own because, you know, Rick lets him out of prison and he goes off on his own. Is it myself and he's talking to Lucille and you're like, I don't care about this fucking character. And then they put him in the show and they had Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who's a wonderful actor. Amazing. But then you're watching him as Negan. I'm like, I'm so bored with all of this, man. I feel like he, his, his brain has gone numb from playing Negan in the show. Yeah. Like he's just coasting on, on the money, which yeah. all well, the power to The show's him. done now, thank God. No. But now they've got all their <laughs> spinoffs. He's coming back. That's what they said. They said the Walking Dead finale was not a finale at all. It was just a fucking it's just a, bunch of spinoffs. A way to get off. To get a way to get it, off. A way to get off. There is a fucking British movie, and I'm so irritated. I can't remember the name of it because I've been thinking of it for a while. Um, the it, Offspring. Yep, exactly. It's that movie where uh, the In Betweeners. Yeah, the uh, the zombies of the In Betweeners. But they they these guys they tie up a girl uh, in a in a barn and she they rape her. They're consistently constantly raping her, and then she dies and becomes a zombie. And they're even raping her while she's a zombie. It's a really weird British movie, and I cannot remember for the life of me like what the name is, but I what? remember that scene so vividly. W- was it on Pornhub? Uh, I believe it was. It was called <laughs> Zombie Three Way, with uh, with uh, Left for Dead. Left for Dead. Did you know that Left for Dead made a second game called Back for Blood? Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I've got it in my Steam library. There's now this uh, fantasy uh, vampire type. Uh, Maybe the guys who did Left 4 Dead? Uh, basically the same idea, like the same kind of game. And it's coming out on Xbox. Wow. Anyway, the plot for Quantum Mania. Good you, luck. You can chime in whenever you have Good something to say. Good fucking luck. Okay, you ready? So, <coughs> I haven't even started yet. I have a question. Okay. The new, and I want you to, because I, I wrote these, and what was funny was I went and saw the movie, and I was letting the movie stew in my head. And then I uh, woke up because my wife snores like a fucking bear. And I went and, and slept on the... Um, I mean, he doesn't snore like a bear. And I woke up because I snore like a bear. We stopped snoring. That's right. Um, what? Because of the surgery. Because we lost weight. We How the fuck snoring. do you know that you stopped snoring? Because I videotape myself <laughs> and watch it every day. How do they sleep? Am I a back sleeper or a side sleeper? I love when people... So the guy that's broken physio on my back, he goes, you... A back sleeper or a side sleeper? I said, I don't know. I'm asleep. I said, what am I going to go with? I'm a back sleeper. You never talked to your wife? Yeah, I talked to her before. Holy shit. My wife. So on Sunday, my kid wanted to go to a cat show. Whoa. Uh, there was a cat show in Kingston, right? A cat show. Like cats. Cat- there was a cat show where they have cats. You know what a cat show is? What are you talking are you, are you about? A stroke? My point is. Is this like a cat cafe where you would watch instead we went- of... <laughs> We're driving to this cat what, what? show. No, no, no. What's a it, cat show? It's where there's a bunch of fucking stupid cats and they judge the cats. Oh, oh, like, okay. What did you think I was talking about like, that I'm taking like, my like kids to? Like a dog to? show. I get it. What, wow. What could you possibly think I was taking my children oh, to? The, the guy that talks about porn 24-7. <laughs> no, so, you wouldn't take your kids there. That's why I was wondering what the fuck was going on. And then if you would have been Cats the Musical, you would have said Cats and you, you wouldn't or go. Or Cats the Musical. Memory. I didn't know that song Memories was from Cats. Cat Did you show. know? I didn't even think it was so bad. So we're on our way to this cat show <laughs> and we're driving and my wife looks at me she goes, oh yeah, happy anniversary. I'm like, oh my oh, god. Oh yeah, today's our anniversary. I never realized. N- we Nicole married. knew? What, that it was our anniversary? Yeah. <laughs> my dad texted me. Everybody's texting me. I'm like, oh yeah, it's my anniversary. Must uh, be on Facebook. But my wife and I have been married for 18 fucking years. Congrats. Oh, 17 years. Congrats. I kept on thinking 18. But she I got you me Oreos for that. <laughs> It was great as we're then we went to Walmart to buy shit. 
and somehow we got in the conversation with the the cashier lady, and the guy who was behind us said, "Ah, oh, seventeen years." He goes, "Congratulations." He goes, "I've been married to my wife long enough that if I had killed her when we got together, I'd be getting out now." <laughs> I was like, "That is the best way to fucking describe how long you've been married." Isn't that how we all think anyway? No, I would never kill my wife because then I'd starve. Not that I love her or anything, but I'd starve because she's good. She's a moderately good. She's a pretty good cook. Must be nice. Much, be- much better than me. That's for goddamn sure. Why, your wife's not a good cook? Oh, I cook. Yeah, but you're probably not. Not lately, because I, all I eat is soup, so. But you're probably not a very good cook. You don't look like a good cook. I'm a good cook. I doubt it. I'm a good cook. Not anymore, because I just <laughs> don't bother. <laughs> you're like, Alexander, you want some soup? He has pizza most of the time. He's a happy kid. Yeah. Kids will, that's the amazing thing about kids, is you can, I'm pretty sure that you could give a kid pizza seven days a week for like a year, and they oh, wouldn't yeah. care. They just eat it. That's the same as our fucking They, they get on like one thing that they want, and that's it. And it's it. It's the yeah. only thing they want. At one point, it was Pizza Pops 24-7. I'm like, okay, it's cheap. Not anymore. No. Neither eggs. A- anyway, this shows how much we loved Quantum Mania. So, here's my question, and then the majority of these are going to be questions. So, Mojo yeah, my whole point, sorry. These. I I, um, I went and saw the movie, and then I, I woke up, and I went laid on the couch, and I was uh, speech-to-text dictating to my phone all these questions that I had about the movie. I was like, I don't feel to answer these. Make, make sure we do your questions as we're going through that part of the note. So, the new Iron Man is a black girl in university. Yes. Doing stuff in Wakanda. Oh, no, I, I can't talk about racism. The shit. new Captain America is Falcon doing stuff <laughs> elsewhere. I don't know. Hulk is off doing She-Hulk stuff. Thor is, I'm glad you said stuff. Thor is <laughs> off doing Love and Thunder stuff. Black Widow is maybe not Black Widow anymore. I don't know. So my question is, who and where are these Avengers that Ant-Man is constantly referring to being part of? It's the celebrity of the Avengers in that time point. But he, he mentions the Avengers, I want to say five or six times in this movie. It's an event, you know, but he's, we got Avengers. The point is he's still playing off of the celebrity of what happened. He saved the city multiple times. He's going to keep playing off of it. Right, but Whether it be five, ten years later. But aren't, yeah, okay. Maybe you're right there, because I was just, aren't all the other people in the world or the B team of which Ant-Man now is unfortunately going to be a part of, don't they know that all the Avengers are gone? I, I think when it comes to comic books, typically that kind of thing, it, slowly gets out. Okay. It's like, if you think of, like, Superman and when he died, and I guess that's a bad analogy. <laughs> but, uh, and I'll get into this more, but my point is, um, Ant-Man, in my opinion, is now... Holy moly! Every time. We should, you should... Uh, I should be ready. <laughs> but I forget about it. Uh, Ant-Man is now on the B team. And I'll be talking about the B, C, and D team, as we saw in this movie. I don't think... Like, Hundred percent B team. No, I, I think this movie completely sets up his daughter to be on that B team. Well, I think it sets her up to be on the C team, but we'll talk about that. So, please continue with describing the plot of this terrible movie. For, um, Fifty right. minutes in. Also, what did you think of this movie just out of the gate? I, um, there are good points to it. Is it worth going to see in the theater? Like, do you need to rush to it? No. Like, it, it's a it's it's a rental. Yeah, it's uh, or or just buy you, rentals aren't really a thing anymore. If if you care to rent for like three ninety nine, you just could buy, buy the buy thing it. for ten. Yeah, like just buy it. Yeah, and it feels like a movie that should be bought, watched once, and forgotten about. Here's a here's a trick: if you do digital uh, downloads. buying downloads, um, if you do digital buying specifically, uh, Microsoft is your best place for deals I, I have found because they'll do a thing where oh the movie just came out it's $25 to to pay for just the digital download right wow but then if you wait like three weeks it's 10 bucks so <laughs> three weeks here I am on a Windows 11 PC here you are shilling Microsoft and you're on a what don't don't start with me on that I have an I have a wonderful computer at home <laughs> During her days of entrapment in Quantum Realm, Janet Van Dyne encounters an exiled traveler named Kang. But you don't know he's exiled yet. No, it said in the in the subtitle. No, I'm kidding. 
I hate that about subtitles, by the way. Hi, I'm when, Kang. When they I'm give exiled. you spoilers, like you're like, who is that? And it says their name. Kang colon. And it hasn't even come up yet. You're just like, motherfucker. <laughs> In the present day, after the battle of Earth, Scott Lang has be- become a successful memoirist, that's a word, and has been living happily with his girlfriend, Hope Van Dyne. I think, didn't he marry her? He should by now. And and I want to say present day, I wish Disney Plus would go through their movies and have some kind of way to make the subtitles based on um, whenever you're watching. So, like, if I'm watching Shang-Chi and it says at some point present day, yeah. that's not true. Yeah, tell me the day it was give, it yeah, said give, present day. There is a specific chronolo- <laughs> chron- chronological order. Oh. Uh, there is a oh, it chronology three, three to it where it, w- it would help to know what date it was if you're going through the movies. Did you know David Cronenberg's movies go in a Cronenbergology? For someone who has not watched Marvel movies and just starting oh, and fuck. going through Good them luck. yeah true but if you're going through them and you watch like three movies in a day and everything is present day and then, <laughs> then you go to the next <laughs> day it's present day afternoon. it's just like oh god it's just it's just a small little issue i have um scott Scott's now teenage daughter, Cassie, has become a political activist, resulting in her, in her becoming estranged from her father. So, I have a question, right out of the gate. Yep. Um, where's Cassie's real mom? Did she die? Uh, did Hope adopt Cassie because she calls the Van Dyne's grandma and grandpa? Like, where's her mom? Did that ever get... But you would think... Oh, no, her mom's, on, her mom's in it. Who? It's that lady that... Uh, that maybe she's not in this one. No, she is. The, no, she's in the second and the first one. She with the cop. That's the now father of the girl. What? Okay. So remember, <laughs> remember when I was in the I first one, it. the cop. The cop is kind of against uh, Scott. Scott. Uh, but in this, in the second one, they're kind of like a team. Like not a team. I but never saw like, the second one. His wife, daughter wife lives with the mother and, and the father. The Who's father the is the cop, and okay. the mother is... Uh, who the fuck knows what she does? But I guess my, 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 my point is, hey, your daughter disappeared into the quantum realm for who knows how long because time moves differently down there. Didn't the mother do anything? How, what's she going to do? She's not a Marvel superhero. <laughs> she could be super mom. She, 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 how much does she know, too? The funny thing is, like in this movie, there's certain people that were not invited back. I'd say. So it's whatever. Scott, uh, while visiting Hope's parents, Hank Pym and Janet, Cassie reveals that she has been working on a device that can establish contact with the quantum realm. Okay. Upon learning this, so uh, we discover near the end of the movie, at the end of the movie, really, um, that people can move through this portal from the quantum realm. Right when she With when she the right technology sure when she sends down the thing remember she at the end when Hope and Ant Man are still stuck down there she jumps over to her computer starts sending down the little thing and the little portal and she goes whoop and pulls yeah, it through it's like a Ghostbusters trap so if every time she was sending that fucking signal down to the quantum realm that was happening why didn't Kang just come through uh, I think he, it took a while to break the signal or something like they didn't do it until maybe he waited until someone was there like maybe he didn't even know it was there yet. It's a big place. That's pretty fucking convenient. Well, a lot of convenience in this movie. I'm just devil's advocating for you that it, horribly. Hope, also, we 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 do the whole fucking um, rundown of oh, Hope oversees everything and she's the best and Hope's amazing and all this. If Hope oversees every part of her company, what is happening when she's down in the quantum realm? Is it falling apart? I'm, I'm sure Hope just micromanages and there's other people <laughs> running. Like, oh fuck, she's gone now. All right, let's get to do some real Hope work. Hope just gets all the. <laughs> All the accolades. Upon learning this, Janet panics and forcefully shuts down the device. But the message is received. Oh, right in time. Resulting in a portal that opens and pulls the five of them into the quantum realm. Scott and Cassie are found by natives. Can we say that? They're quantum realmians. Okay, who are rebelling against their ruler. While Hope, Janet, and Pim explore a sprawling city to get answers. Also, um, so I'm just, like right out of the gate, 
these quantum realmians, everything in the quantum realm is fucking stupid. Uh, I'm sure if you're a Marvel purist, if you like this movie, you're like, dude, quantum realm is so cool. The qu- the idea of the quantum realm is fucking stupid. Every part of it to me is stupid. No part of it's enjoyable. No part of it is, wow, that's cool. It's dumb. All of it's dumb. So as soon as I saw that it was called Quantum Mania, I'm like, oh, Christ. This whole fucking stupid movie is going to take place in the quantum realm really, really bad. So they go down to the quantum realm, and you discover that there's quantum realmians, one of which is a guy with a light bulb head. And I'm like, this is fucking stupid. Stupid. That guy was lame, but but the uh, the goo guy was awesome. So let's be puerile here for a second, and I'm not going to be disgustingly puerile, but at least honestly puerile. The um, uh, uh, goo thing comes up to Scott and says, "How many holes do you have?" And then the guy who can read minds says, "He's answering. He has five holes." And then Scott thinks for a second. He goes, "Yeah, that's that's right." Now, why don't you? Count your holes. My wife and I were debating this, and I was saying we have more than that. That's right. They weren't counting um, as a man. So don't even say, take a woman no, in consideration yeah. as a man. They weren't counting two holes. Technically, they weren't counting four because I don't think Scott has ever seen a goddamn skeleton. See, that doesn't count. If it's covered, there's no hole. You, there's fucking two big holes right here. That was counted. No, they didn't. I'm pretty sure. One, two, three, four, five. I don't think they were counting this. Really? I thought they were counting or, or the nose. My wife was saying she doesn't think the ears were counting because they're enclosed. No, she said five. He, or he said you have five holes. One, two, three, four, okay. five. Count from the bottom. One, two, two three, four. Would you count your belly button? No, because it's not open. It's closed. Yeah. Yeah. So would you, penis. Then, then would you count anus? Your, your anus? Because yeah. it's, it's a fucking hole. It's a sphincter, though, and it's closed. So is your goddamn throat. That's, That's why stuff hole. isn't leaking out at this point. Some people it is. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was for Ant-Man. <laughs> he was, He's it, wearing diapers and that thing. He was anal leakage man. Yeah. But the point is, Scott has seven holes. Uh, sorry, uh, nine holes. And so I was like, I understand that it's it's puerile to bring up your ass and your penis. Sure. If, if so we'll you leave want to comment on this matter and tell us how like many holes. Fucking, uh, have you ever seen a goddamn fucking skeleton? It's got two great big fucking holes right there. You have two fucking holes right here. I counted them. They did not count them. I counted them. Yeah, you can count this. All right. Please continue reading. <laughs> <laughs> Hope, Janet, and Pam meet with Lord Krylar, a former ally of Janet's, who reveals that things have changed since she left and that he is now working for Kang, the Quantum Realm's new ruler. That would be Quantum Realm. Bill Murray. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I had no idea who you're talking about. I, I I feel Bill Murray did a good job for what he was given. I know. Like just, he was just he, to be a cameo. He was just being Bill Murray. Yeah. yeah. Like he, but again, but like ah, whatever. The, the the Quantum Realm is fucking stupid. That's uh, that's all I'll just continue to keep on saying. The three are forced to flee and steal Krylar's ship. The Langs. That's that sounds like a band. <laughs> the Langs. Maybe they are. Oh, yeah, oh, maybe, Cassie maybe and now. Scott. Going on tour. With the Pims. Musical <laughs> guest, the Pims. Oh, my God. <laughs> but here's another point. So, for the first hour, hour of the movie, this movie is 600 hours long. For the like first it, yeah. fucking hour of the movie, everybody is saying, he is coming. He's here. He knows you're here. He. What about him? Have you seen him? What does he look like now? It, it, we saw him go right to my notes. <laughs> he is here. He knows we're here. He knows what we're done. How hard would it have been for someone to say, hey, there's this dude, Kang. He conquers everything, and he's our enemy here, and then just use his name, Kang. Well, everyone expects people to know because it's like saying, like, hey, you know who doesn't know? Your fucking audience. I know the audience yeah. knows because they're all fucking but comic But they don't know geeks. there's an audience there. But they're, they're not Deadpool. But it's fucking, he's here. Oh, he's, like, stop saying he. Everyone knows his fucking name is Kang. Just say fucking Kang. Or say the fucking Conqueror. Or say he that will not be fucking named. You saw how stupid that was with Harry Potter. Just do that. It's a movie. Fucking stupid one. <laughs> the three are forced to flee and steal Krylar. I said that. The Langs, meanwhile, are told by... He didn't Re- say that they stole a ship. 
Yeah, I did. And then remember, Michael Douglas had to fucking fist the anus of the ship. Isn't that great? <clears throat> I'd be all into that. I'd be like, like fisting the shit out of it. Turn around and like your turn, ship. <laughs> See if you can find my pim particle. <laughs> if you do it right, I'll grow. <laughs> Are told by a rebel leader, Gentora, that Janet's involvement with Kang is indirectly responsible for his rise to power. The rebels, <laughs> so- the rebels soon come under come under attack by Kang's forces led by Modok. Oh, my God. This looked awful. Who is revealed to be Darren Cross. So, MODOK. I love the initial MODOK that was shown with the, with the, the mask. mask. Yeah. When you take the mask off, we have someone's first day on the job doing CG. Yep. Or so- I'd say oh, someone's it's horrible eye movie. choice. It's fucking iMovie on my Mac. It was terrible. And it's I remember... In my uh, the audience I was watching this, so I took my my boys to this. Uh, it was it was funny. We gave them an ultimatum: you boys got to come to me to see Ant Man, or stay here and no fucking electronics the whole time I'm gone. You, you would think that they'd be all for it. It's because they they've the worst thing about having kids. I'm just gonna go on a tirade here for a second. The worst thing about having kids is it's awesome sometimes that they're like you, and then it's terrible sometimes that they're like you. Because you're, you're like, oh, this little version of myself. And then you're like, oh, a little version of myself. I'm yeah. terrible. They pick up on things. Because they become these little fucking critics of everything we watch. They're like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So the whole time we're watching they, Ant-Man. They want to be like you. But the whole time we're watching Ant-Man, they're like, that doesn't make any sense. They're like, how, do, how could they drink the goo and the goo knows that they're speaking English? What if you're speaking a different language? When you drink the fucking goo, does it know if you're speaking Spanish? What if that guy's speaking Spanish? Would the guys from down in the fucking underworld know what's that? Wouldn't the guys from the underworld already know what they're saying because they've drunk Isn't the goo? Isn't it great that they think of these things, though? And But I love it, but then I'm like, you boys need to shut up and just watch this movie. <laughs> I have to review this. <laughs> but, uh, so, I lost my train of thought, but the point is... Um, kids. What were we talking about? Kids. Yeah, kids are great. But what were you talking about? I, uh, I lost they, of thought. My son did the same thing for Can You Taste It? That show I used to do where I tasted food, he would want to review food every time we got new foods at the stores. So he'd be like, what it's do you think Modoc. of it? And then I was like, it's cute, but it's too much. Like, now we need to cut all this single. up because I forgot what the fuck we're doing and we got to make it so, seamless. Yeah, this show is so seamless. <laughs> but no, we're talking about MODOK. And uh, so I don't know where my boys came into this when I was watching, but when the MODOK thing shows up, Oh, that's what, uh, so when the MODOK thing shows up, even the boys were like, this looks terrible. Like, it looks stupid. It and looks it, like you forgot to put on the 3D goggles or something. And it, it was just... Just for that area. But it was all, like, MODOK, it, I, I imagine, and I don't know, I don't know anything about about this character. Um, MODOK seems like, like pure evil. Like, he's a joke because he's kind of silly looking, but he's pure evil. And as soon as that fucking mask comes off, I don't know why it had to come off, but as soon as that mask comes off, any evil part of that character is gone because it looks so fucking foolish. I, I think at the end of the day, they just wanted to bring in Modoc and just do like, okay, he's here, but and we made him part of the story. We tried to make mm-hmm. it make sense, but we, we're throwing it out because yeah. we're not never going to yeah, use it Yeah, he just again. dies at the end. So... Whatever. I'm like, why not make Modok like a fucking Darth Maul, who's just a scary fucking evil dude? You know, I agree. And like, the worst thing, like, even if you went this route that you went, why'd you stretch his face like that? Yeah, like that was the worst idea. Yeah, like, oh, I, it happened because he went into the quantum world. We all messed up. Yeah. Okay, great. You you made your. How come that's never happened? Like anyone shit. else? How come he doesn't have a light bulb head? Like it's fucking. It just ugh. looked. Like the CG was wrong. Yeah. If it didn't look like the CG was wrong and it was like purposely done, but then with what fine. we learned about the fact that this was put on uh, like the back burner for for Wakanda, it kind of makes sense that they're like, dude, we got no one. We got this fucking guy. It's his first day. He has no idea how to use Photoshop. Fucking John, he'll figure it out, right? <laughs> uh, best I got. I feel like there was a lot of shrugging. How how do <laughs> how do they make the the moving buildings look so much better than Modok? 
But also, how would like I'm willing to bet that when they came in, they're like, "Oh, that's what Modoc looks like," and the rest of the team was like, "We only have an hour left. To g- <laughs> we can't change it. I'm sorry." A board Crylar ship. Yes, a board Crylar. Crylar. A board Crylar ship. Janet confesses to Hope and Pym why she wanted nothing to do with the quantum realm again. Kang <laughs> claimed that he and Janet could both. Sorry, Kang. Did I say Clang? Yes. Kang claimed. Kang Clang. No, that he and Janet could both escape from the quantum realm if she helped him rebuild his multiversal power core. Okay, so I want to bring up another thing. Um, the amount of phony stakes in this movie is the most I think I've seen in a Marvel movie. Taking, like, um, Endgame and all the time travel nonsense into consideration, specifically. Uh, so, and by phony stakes, I mean, like, oh, hopefully that person will be okay. So, um, uh, Cassie gets knocked down in a, you know, light bulb head or someone is walking up to her. You're supposed to be afraid, and then oh, I have a suit. You're like, so Cassie has a suit. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer knows how to talk to everybody down there, so there's no possibility that there will be any sort of miscommunication. Uh, she knows everybody down there. The ants were there the whole fucking time, which is what we find out in the end of the movie. There Spoilers. are there are no stakes at all in this movie. It's because all the ants ate them. That's right. Ants like steaks. They show up and then they turn to maggots. Why didn't they have Ant Maggot Man? He was like a fucking Have all hybrid. the maggots come in? Right? Imagine the fucking role, the, the, the war of maggots versus ants. And that's what Mechanized became maggots. of those bear... Maggot only designed for destruction or killing or whatever the hell Modoc's supposed to be called to be a maggot. That would be scary. But the point is, there were no stakes, so you never at any fucking point in this movie felt any sort of tension it was just a was, cgi yeah, it was just like okay yeah you're just like okay I'll, do, I'll just continue fucking watching and you know how much i want these to be good yeah and and for me to say okay Th- and that's what it is you're it's, like all right, all right. sure and, and then I, I i'm waiting for that marvel movie to give, give us back that feeling of like but iron you know man like it's, the first one it's like, because they can't do that anymore because and, and this is something I'll, I'll talk about. Uh, they put all their money into the wrong thing. That's what it is. It's they're they're putting all their money into okay. CG. Let's make a humongous universe. None of it needs to interconnect. None of it needs to have any tension. None of it needs to have any stakes because uh. there's a whole bunch of different multiverses. When you watch Endgame, okay, and and here's the thing: Jonathan Majors, he's a wonderful fucking actor, and he deserves all the accolades he's going to get from the other work that he's working on. Besides this. Um, oh, even this, like he's well, doing, he does a I'm great curi- job. I'm curious to see where he goes with Kang. Not enough to go see the movies in theaters, but I'm curious to see what he does with Kang. But he will never compare to Thanos, and the reason is Thanos ha- his Thanos's uh, entire arc makes perfect sense. Oh yeah, right. I- Kang's does not. Kang's does not make any sort of sense. He's a conqueror, right? Well, we haven't gotten to the point where it would, but. Yet. Kang the Conqueror was a conqueror, and now there's a whole bunch of different Kangs, and they might be conquerors. Okay, whatever. There, 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 from what I understand, there was always a bunch of different Kangs because yep. of the multiverse, and they were like the, a guy, guy named like Neil McDonald or something, all the and same they discovered Kang, each other. Yeah, ended up doing the same thing, which was discover the multiverse, and then one went, "Oh, I'm going to take," it. and then then it's a war. But yeah. but the point is, there's no one uh, uh, antagonist. Whereas with Thanos, he he led an army, and he was such a perfect antagonist. And then the protagonists that went up against him, you believed in them. One, they were good actors, really good actors. And two, because we had seen them develop from a world of no superheroes into a world with superheroes, you you were you enjoyed that journey, right? You were a hundred percent on board with that journey. This one, when Ant Man and fucking Lightbulb Head and the Quantum Realm and all these people come into the world, it's already a world that's right. It's had the blip. Yep. It's ripe. It knows about multiverse. It's got Doctor Strange. It's got all the Avengers and it knows about Thanos. So you're already starting for a point of, yeah, okay, all this fantastical shit, I already, it, I, it's not surprising. I don't have to spend any disbelief. It's all there. So there's, there's n- nothing to be interested in. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing to think, oh, man, I really hope that guy doesn't wipe out half the world. And when he does, dude, I really hope we can get that half of the world back. There's, there's nothing like that. Something to say about it. Always being, everything is already established. And the stuff that is brought in new has no focus. 
has no it's, focus. It's just like, here's the thing, here's the thing, yep. here's the thing, and you don't care. Yeah, because there's no tension. Yeah. If there's no tension, I don't care. Like, the early movies, you were building a certain character, yep. and that was the whole movie. Now it's not origin movies. You have little cameo origins, like, yep. uh, what's what's her, Cassie? Yep, good old Cassie. Is that what it is? No. His daughter. Cassie. Thank you. Cassie is the perfect example in this one where it's like, yes, she's been there for multiple movies, but it's been like little bit, like little parts that is building to be that origin, which doesn't also, matter because we don't care. Yeah. You don't give, I don't give a shit about his fucking daughter. Uh, the same way I don't give a shit about his fucking wife. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I don't care. And the problem is if you don't care, you have zero interest. You, you don't give a shit. What you happens? You can't go back cases? and say, uh, Let's do a Cassie Lang movie on on our own. That's right. It doesn't work. Uh, like it now has to be the next Avengers or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I just and it's going to be a bunch of characters that were slightly built up. Yep. And and I'm I'm going to keep on beating the same drum through all these fucking movies and TV shows, and that I just don't give a shit about any of these fucking characters. It's, and and it, it's a detriment. I'm not saying it to be a prick. I'm saying it because it's a detriment. I uh, I mean I am a prick, so I don't have to say anything. I just already am. But I say it because, man, it would be fu- I want that feeling I had when I watched Infinity War again. I'm chasing that fucking high. With we're going to get a little bit a little bit of that because we're going to yeah. get it for in the Secret Wars. It, we won't, because, though. Because that's what everyone is looking forward to. Yeah, but the problem is I don't care about any the, of these fucking I, people. I, I, I hear you, but that'll be the reset. I guess. I, 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 right after that, and we'll, we'll we're going to get back to... The fundamentals, and it's going to be Fantastic Four re, like, f- from Remake. the ground floor, yep, yep. X Men from the ground floor, and whatever else they want to go with. I hope so, because this phase four and phase five to me have been terrible. Like, just re- a real, not even, I, I don't want to say terrible, like a letdown. I wanted so much more, I agree. And, and nothing. It's been sucky. After they manage to repair it, Janet sees a vision of Kang con- conquering and destroying entire timelines. Kang reveals he was exiled by his own variants out of fear, which drove Janet to turn on him. So, oh. if you were Kang, <clears throat> uh, what's her name? Michelle Van Dyne touches the thing. She's like, holy fuck, dude. I decided to destroy a whole bunch of worlds. He's like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. I've never done that. Yeah. I arrived here the same way that you did. I, I don't know, dude. I have no idea. I have no it. desire to do it. And she's like, but dude, I saw it. I said. Dude, I, we're in the quantum realm. Maybe there's something fucked down here. Yeah. You're telling me this fucking guy isn't smart enough to lie? Isn't smart enough to go, I don't know what you're talking about. I think he knows what ended up happening. Like, he wasn't he was, it wasn't sure that she got those visions because you could probably see anything. If you, if you got that blip of power or whatever it was. But all you got to do is, like the fucking CG animators. Hmm? Like that's all the that's all he had to do, and if this guy's supposed to be so fucking smart that they exiled him, he was he was one of the dumbest people in the fucking movie, and it sucked because he was but, he was so good at being bad, and then he makes dumbass decisions like that. But the all the Kangs are different. I hope so because this so, one wasn't very smart, as you saw at the, in the in the in the horrible stinger, oh. which we'll get to. <laughs> all the all the Kangs are different. I want to say something, but it's going to come off as racist again, and I don't want to say it. I like how all the shit you say comes off as racist. It's time to just accept the fact that you're no, racist. No, you can't say that. Stop it. Jesus Christ. And now religious. Was it black? <laughs> I won't say it. Outmatch. <laughs> Janet used her PIM particles to enlarge the power core and render it unusable. <clears throat> okay, so now I have a long tirade. Oh, no. The MacGuffin of the quantum drive makes absolutely no sense when you think about it. So think about it here for people. Think about it here for a people. Think about it here for a moment, people. I left a word out. It's just a tool to get to the next thing. Michelle Pfeiffer realizes that Kang is a monster and attaches things to the quantum drive that make it way too big to use. Correct? Yeah. Well, it enlarges it. Yes. In the quantum realm. Okay. What's your point? Ant-Man shows up. And Kang says, go get it for me, because you have the ability to get super small. Why doesn't Kang have the ability to get super small? He's in the quantum realm. He's in the goddamn quantum realm. Why did Kang... No, he got put in the quantum realm. He doesn't change his own size. 
Okay, so even though he's in the quantum realm, Kang can't change shit about himself? No. Okay. He was put there. Okay. Why did Kang wait until now to try to go get it? Why did he have to wait he, for Because he needed Ant-Man to shrink to get down, or was it grow big? So Modok couldn't do that. He, no, Modok doesn't change size. Okay. He was put down there as well. Okay. Why did Michelle Pfeiffer not just destroy it in the first place? If she knew how bad he was. Maybe that was the intent. It looked like she was destroying it. Okay. What was the point of blowing it up so it was super big? Or you're I saying think, maybe she yeah. didn't know she was doing that? It looked okay. like it was like blowing up while it was like blowing up. You know what I'm saying? So then the real question is, why as soon as Michelle Pfeiffer was rescued from the quantum realm, did she not say to someone, dude, there's a guy down there that is a conqueror of worlds. We need to fucking destroy this quantum realm. Or sorry, we need to destroy this thing in the quantum realm. Or better yet, let's just destroy the whole goddamn quantum realm. That is definitely... Uh, a, a plot hole because that was the stupidest thing she could have done. It was like, yeah, she oh, never I'm going to keep it all a secret. It. Like, what are you doing? Uh, and and uh, like, what else are you keeping a secret? And that's, that's what it was. And, but her husband's just like, oh, you're back. Love you. Also, I fucked this guy when I was in the quantum realm. And she goes, he, and makes this you think was, they were swingers or something. Cause they, like, he just didn't give a shit. I feel like they wanted to make that. He was a complete cuck. Because he goes, Maybe. yeah, I fucked this girl, Linda. And she's like, oh, yeah, why didn't it work out? He goes, she wasn't you, baby. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, give me a break. I think they were swingers. Like, granted, Michelle Pfeiffer's a gorgeous woman. Nothing wrong with that. But you're Michael Douglas. You're Hank Pym. You can catch some ass. Give me a fucking break. Maybe it was fucking ants. Maybe the guy was just obsessed with banging fucking Maybe they ants. had an understanding. Maybe he has an ant fetish. Maybe, maybe it would be. Maybe it's like Modoc's lamb fetish. <laughs> oh, but yeah. You uh, didn't see that movie. No. Ant Man 2. You'll see. Okay. No, but you'll never watch the it. The point is, like, I'm never going to watch this again. But the point is, like, if this guy was so bad, and again, it's logic, and I know it's comics, but why not just destroy the quantum realm? The quantum realm is so useless. You can't destroy the quantum but realm. But it's useless. Why? Hey. Why? Why can't you destroy it? Because Set fire it, to it. That's it's not it's not tangible. It's like it's 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 a universe. It's like everywhere is the quantum realm. Yes, you're you're when you're shrinking down, you're going down to this point way down here. But there's also all this area way over here, all this area over here. It's like the universe. It's infinite. Okay. So if you thought where we are in the universe is infinite, <laughs> think of where quantum mania is in the universe. So there's no, you can't just kill it. That's like saying, kill the universe. You can't, un unless, I don't know, uh, secret right wars. Or something. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking stupid. How come the quantum verse or the quantum mania verse wasn't affected in the blip? Maybe it was. They didn't really. I fucking hate that. the quantum realm. It's so fucking stupid. K Kang, having regained his powers, eventually conquered the quantum realm afterward. Sure. The Langs are taking. He the conquered the whole quantum realm. Figure that one out. They make it sound. You are like correct. It's that tiny, they, right? They make like it sound dish. like it was. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but like from my understanding, it's 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 a universe everywhere. The guy I could be completely that wrong. came up with a quantumverse must have been so high, dude. It's like a fucking small universe inside of our universe, and you like fucking shrink down. If every you atom there, had a universe, and there's fucking plants, and there's people but, with light bulbs. But heads, this comes from the idea a of goo like goo man that you swallow the goo man's goo. He comes in your mouth, and then you can understand what he's saying. It's like what if we are the quantum realm, realm, and there's like it's giants, like little, the little bacteria that, that are inside see. of your bodies. Exactly. I've got probably like a little ant man's and light bulb heads and running around my body. And that's the idea of the quantum realm. I imagine the guy with goo. I don't know where he is. If you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, he can. He's now got a hole. The one that gets less and less used as I get older. <laughs> the, the Langs are taken to Kang, who demand. So if you were having sex with this goo guy, would you be happy to be able to talk to him, or would you prefer him not to know what you're saying and vice versa? See, I think I'd prefer he knows what I'm saying, because if I say, all right, I'm going to pull out and come on your face, and he doesn't understand what I'm saying, you pull out and, like, ejaculate all over the guy's face. He's going to be terrified. It's just going to absorb, though. But he's still... Or I don't get stuck to his shield. Somebody's face. <laughs> his shield. Or you know what? The guy is gonna. The guy who can read minds is gonna be like, "Hey, Goo Man, he's gonna come on your face." Isn't he in like this glass pod thing? Too. <laughs> I don't know. 
Like a fishbowl. I forget. The Langs are taken to Kang, who demands that Scott help get his power core back, or else he will kill Cassie. Oh, and boy. And this was the only scene where I'm like, wow, dude. Like, there's some real acting going on here. Because Jonathan Majors, he's trying... And I appreciate the different dimensions of what of what he's trying to do here. Because he's trying to be... Um, he's trying to appeal to Ant-Man... But it reminded him at the same time, like, dude, I can, I've destroyed all the fucking Avengers a hundred lifetimes over. Yeah. I'm trying to appeal to you and I will let you go, but understand that I can crush you in a fucking instant, but I, I need you right now. I hope at some point they show him like, why his he was exiled. Yeah. Like, it, or his versions of his past. Like, I'm sure it'll come up in all these different movies. Yeah. Well, the next one's called the Kang Dynasty, right? I think that's our next movie is Avengers Kang Dynasty. Okay, then that would make sense. But I just, Jonathan Majors is really doing something. And like I said, I, I can't say I 100% agree with it, but he's doing something. Yeah. Michael Douglas, Michelle Michelle Pfeiffer kind of is trying. Eventually, Lily, why she's an actress is beyond me because she's terrible. And um, that wig. She's so bad, that right? That haircut, whatever it was. Um, oh. But Jonathan Majors is trying. And, and I dug on the fact that he was trying something. You know, and there was... A legit. And I'll say Ant Man, like he he does a good job for what he's given. For what he's given, yeah. Like if he, you he's, if you want to see him really relief. good role models. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Paul Rudd, absolutely. But he's uh, he he's Ant Man is um, a uh, he's a um, excuse me, I had to burp. Comic relief. Yeah. And constant. Yeah. Why they would have a movie starring comic relief as the main actor is kind of beyond me, but whatever. I do think one thing that's clever, what they're doing, that book that he's showing, mm. it's actually coming out. Yeah, they're saying it's an actual book. I, I, I want to I do the audio book, not, not read it. Obviously. No, you should read the audio book. That would be fantastic. <laughs> no, they're going to get him to do it. You know that. It'll be great. When I fought with the Avengers in crumpological order. I will definitely buy it. On you should read some excerpts from Audible. For... I just canceled my Audible account. You weren't getting... You decided to actually read instead? No. I, I do enjoy listening to books in Audible, but um, Karen... Uh, we Basically, we had two services. We had Scribed and Audible. Oh. And Audible makes you buy the books where Scribed is like a library. You can rent them out. And I'm like, yeah, oh. Scribed makes more sense because I don't want to own the it's fucking like books in Audible. You prefer the Game Pass-like version. Yeah. I get it. But doesn't... I thought Audible did that. As well. the, no, the majority of stuff in the library is available if you have an Audible account. But then, so what you do is you pay twenty bucks a month, and then you get a credit, and all those credits toward count towards books that you buy. Here's a commercial for Audible that we're doing, and um, then you you keep it. And I, I just finished Battle Royale. Um, I have and a I'm, few books. Yeah, I'm starting on a, a, a new book, but I've uh, purchased all the stuff that I can't get anywhere else. So now that I purchased all the stuff, that's why I canceled my account. I'm like, I because you can keep the books after you've uh, canceled the account, right? So I've just canceled my Audible account, and all those books are there. For I, you I keep telling you, get get McFoley's first book; you'll love it. I will not. Or if you want to read the actual book, I, I can, will get. I can lend it to you. Ant Man, being anted, being someone's aunt. I will give you straight out China's book because I don't want to. Buy... <laughs> China was what someone that confused me because. Like sexually? Yeah. Because when she first came on the scene, <laughs> I was confused in that I like that she's a big lady that can beat me up because I always like that. But she was very, her jaw was very masculine. And that was the one part of her that would always, the, the muscles didn't bother you at up. all. Yeah. But it was her the face. jaw that I was like, that's really masculine. She got, uh, well, then when she put her fake titties in and uh, you were she, like, she got facial. Oh really? She got, she, facials. Her she got facials. It, it's she's a, got plastic surgery for sure. It's a bummer though, because I only remember is that, and I was like, I can understand why she'd be like, she's an, an attractive woman if you're into that type of thing. But it was just always for me. It was always that part of her job that just. Eh, this was, was the time frame that uh, WWE would go to the women and go like, if you want, we'll pay for your plastic surgery, and and we'll benefit off of it. Hmm? But it's up to you. But I feel like at the same time China was there, there was uh, Sable, Stormy McDaniels Sunny, and, and uh, Sable. and Stormy. Wasn't there something called Stormy McDaniels? No. Oh, no, Stormy Daniels is a porn star that yeah. Trump fucked. Wasn't there something called... Uh, fuck. Like Stratosphere? 
Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus. There she's we are. Tor- Trish Stratus. She's from Toronto. Wow. But I mean, it was all these like wow, tiny, skinny women, and then there was big China. You know, like yep. I, I don't. Was there any other women like China? Um, now, <clears throat> Rhea, Rhea Ripley is the China like person. What about uh, before uh, Beth Phoenix? Wasn't there a who uh, now who who married Edge? Who's the MMA? R- Ronda Rousey. Ron- Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Is she in WWE? Yeah. Really? Eh? She came back. Wow. And she's anyway, back then, not man. being used well. <laughs> Let me tell you that. I'd use Ronda Rousey. I would too. Jeez. She just had a kid and she still looks great. The Langs are taken to Kang. I said that. Scott is taken to the core. It's location. And, shr- <laughs> and shrinks down. He is nearly drowned in a sea of variants of himself. My, my boys, that was the only part of the movie that they really liked. But these weren't actual variants. Yeah. These were like potential. Yep. Yeah. But Hope arrives and helps him acquire the power core. However, Kang reneges, I'm not saying that, reneges on the deal, capturing Janet and destroying her ship with Pym on it. Oh, no. After being rescued by his aunts, who were also pulled into the quantum realm, rapidly evolved and became hyper-intelligent. That was so fucking stupid. Like A means to an end. Do you remember... You probably weren't in the theater. You were probably, I you was know, probably too a baby. Young. So I remember being in the theater, and I was, oh, fuck, uh, 88, so I would have been 11. Um, and I'm okay. watching. I would have been five. Okay, so I'm 11 years old because I went opening night old to timer. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I remember, Lucky. right? Yeah. I remember. I probably did too. When right? we were watching it, and the part when it cuts to when Shredder is talking about how, uh, not Shredder, I'm sorry, uh, Splinter is le- uh, talking about how he learned everything. And it goes to the little puppet and the cage doing the things. Everyone in our audience started laughing. And me as a loved girl, those don't laugh. It's fucking Splinter. Yeah, it's this, Master Splinter. This movie is super important. So awesome. But you watch it now and you're like, that's kind of no, stupid. No, no, no. No. I watch it. I love it. It's right. Don't so get me wrong. Good. I love it, but I'm like, that's kind of stupid. Um this. But I, I, it's stupid with but, like a but love. But then you get I Peter Jackson to remake it, and holy shit! But then I, I absolutely, I, I still watch it, and that first one holds up because it's, it, it's the of all the Ninja Turtle movies, it's the most emotional one. Yeah, and I love, I, I love that scene with how silly it is. It's the Raphael movie. This when, uh, it's like yeah, the ants, they like became their own colony. Surprise and ants! They're they're super smart, and he, he, even Michael Douglas is like, I don't care what to say. He's like. The smart ants. Like he he I, I think he was like they were like, Hey Michael Douglas, read this in the script. Nah, I'll say they're smart ants. It it was so fucking stupid that even then I was like, this movie doesn't care. I think it was at that point where I had that epiphany that this movie doesn't care at all. No one here cares. Michael Douglas certainly doesn't fucking care. He's like, What? Uh, gotta say ants, K Pims and ants and super smarts and Give can, my paycheck. Can you put the ants on the screen? No. Right, give, me, no? give me my oh, paycheck. Okay. Where do I have to stand? Okay, great. Okay. Are, are oh, the ants hey, here ant. or there? When do I have to finger the ship again? Why didn't you get real ants? It was awful. Pim helps Scott and Hope as they make their way to Kang. Cassie rescues Gentora and they commence an up, uh, uprising against Kang and his army. During the fight, Cassie convinces Cross to turn sides and fight Kang. Though he sacrifices his life in the process. See, that should have been a little bit, bit more drawn out in a proper movie. I thought it was fucking stupid. It was stu- just, I'm like, just quick. Yeah, hurry up. And also, they treat it as a joke. Yep. They're like, oh, brothers. And that could have been know. a good... Yeah. Yep. And honestly, honestly, they could have made something out of it where he could have gotten his own show on Disney+. Plus. Oh, he probably will. The How MODOK Maybe. became MODOK. Yeah. Well, we could get a MODOK variant that is actually... Because so many people that, complain. Yeah. Good point. Who fucking cares if he exactly. dies? Because he'll just come alive in another fucking multiverse. Okay. We'll, we'll get it in another multiverse. And it'll be like some like really fucking horroristic, batshit crazy MODOK. Uh, can we'll you imagine like, oh, yeah. like MODOK done by like fucking uh, Gamble del Toro? Or like MODOK done by fucking Love Quentin House. Tarantino? <laughs> that shit would be Magnet. great. What? Magnet. Who the fuck's magnet? Oh, you keep not knowing magnet. That's right. I you know what a magnet ho- is. I'm so funny. I'm- no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I find it so funny 
that that you're the horror guy and you don't know the company Magnet. Magnet does a lot of crappy horror. Really? Stuff. I know like Asylum and stuff, but they do like crappy. Well, whatever. Point is, at least they used to. I don't. I guess everyone in the entire We're family there. is cool that Michelle Pfeiffer led an entire life down in the quantum realm that she's not telling anybody about. Some preparedness would have helped them with quicker and did not and uh, not lose so many people. But we're all just cool with that. Like, hey, Michelle Pfeiffer, it would have been known that we were coming down here to fight a guy named Kang and being able to have the weapons that could put us up against his entire army that we know that he would have conquered. But it's cool that you didn't tell us. Sweep it under the rug. Yeah, just it's I, fine. It, that doesn't matter because it's the quantum realm. It shows what kind of person she is. Maybe your empathy, oh, maybe your. Uh, logic shrinks down in the quantum realm. That's why when she's like, no, I just didn't tell you. Because she's, why not? She's just full of privilege. That's the... She's white. And she's a Karen. In the quantum realm. No. If you had to... In this movie, the Karen is definitely fucking hope. That haircut, that's a Karen, dude. Janet fixes the power core as she, Pim, Hope, and Cassie jump through it was a portal home. So exciting! But Kang attacks. Well, I did like watching Kang beat the living shit out of Ant Man. That was fun. But Kang attacks Scott, nearly beating him into submission. Wow! Hope returns, and together with Scott, destroy the power core with a combination of Pim particles and knock Kang into it, causing him to be pulled into oblivion. Wherever wow. that is. Wow. <laughs> So it's exciting. the quantum realm's quantum realm. Sure is exciting. Cassie reopens the portal on her and to Scott and So here's and here's home. what happens for As anybody who hasn't seen the movie. She's like, oh, here we're back. Oh, we're back. Oh, my computer. Uh, pulling through. Uh, here's dad. Yay, hug. Like it, you could like, oh, oh, but nobody the, cares the, what's happening in this fucking movie. The large size hug that they give to each other. Oh. And then they say, oh, it's like hugging a giant... Whatever, but it's like you're both the same size. Why are you acting like you're hugging something giant? Also, when they're in the quantum realm, it's like you're so big. Yeah, you're so big. You're in the quantum realm. You're microscopically no, but, small. But that's based off of what, what the size quantum you realm are. That's, fucking sucks. That's relative to your size. I hate this movie. Not hate it. That's not that's not true. I didn't hate this movie. This movie frustrated me with how little it cared Speaking about. Speaking of frustrating, in a mid credit scene, numerous variants of Kang are concerned by Earth 616's increased increasing interest in the multiverse and plan their uprising. And then they go into an arena and there's a bunch of Kangs. And they're all like, Bro, you got this, you got this, bro. And I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? This is Stupid because like, there's there's a Dracula Kang. There's an amazing and there's a amount of Kang. There's an amazing amount of bad acting. Oh like I love Jonathan. I wouldn't Majors. call it bad. I'd call it he's he's like I said, he's trying something. He's going over the top. Yeah. But he comes in as like one's but a I Dracula. I think they told him to. Yeah. Oh yeah. one's a Dracula, one's a Pharaoh. Yep. I'm like, this is well, moronic. It's based off of stuff in the comics. I'm sure the it pharaoh is. is part of But it's fucking it looks moronic. Yeah. I'm watching, I'm like also, I don't know if it was just my theater. Could you make out almost anything in that no, scene? It was so it, fucking it was dark. Weird, yeah. So here's the last thing that I'll bitch about. Well, second last thing I'll bitch about this stupid movie. The stinger scene the invalidates the entire movie. The post credit? Or this? No, no. The, the post credit, I was like, oh, look, Loki and fucking can, Owen Wilson can, again. Can we have, like, a proper stinger happen anytime? Not like anymore. Now it's just like, okay, Loki. Well, who cares? Like, I love the Loki series. I know it's coming back. Mm. You, who cares if you're telling me this information? You know I'm here to fun? see a stinger <laughs> that takes me to the next movie, not to a TV show I already know. But that's it's happening. all part of the same I thing. Be surprised. Now. All part of the same thing now. The stinger scene invalidates the entire movie. There is an army of Kangs who saw Ant Man's Kang trying to take over everything, so they exiled him to the quantum realm. Right. If that Kang had succeeded in defeating Ant-Man and came into power again, they'd just say, oh shit, he's back. Exile him again. Yeah, they'd try the same thing, but then he'd so know that plan. The entire battle that we just watched was ultimately pointless because had Kang won, they would have just exiled him again. Not to mention, at the end of the movie, Scott has the realization that Kang had said, if I don't win, something also bad is going to happen. So ultimately, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Question, Everything that happened in the movie was pointless. Question, why exile him when you... Could you kill not him? kill him? Yeah. yeah. Again, right? 
Maybe they'd say, oh, shit, dude, we exiled him. He came back. This time we should just kill him. Also, your stinger should have something to do with the next Marvel movie Maybe coming. it's Loki. No, the next Marvel movie is the Guardians of the Galaxy. But also, hey, you it know, have uh, some link. You know what property we've got to sell? Loki. Like it again. It feels like is Loki it's, coming out before Guardians. It just feels like selling, selling. No art, no interest in artistic merit. Sell, sell, sell is all this feels like. Yeah. So last thing I'll say. <coughs> yeah, we're <coughs> past, we're past an hour now. Marvel's Phase Four and Phase Five formula does not work. They are making the DC mistake. They set up a whole bunch of characters really quick, B actors with C performances, and arguably they are all the B team because the Avengers was the A team. They want you to care about these characters and be bothered when they suffer or die. Take Lamphead as the example. The problem is you barely even care about the B team, so you certainly aren't going to care about the B, C, or D team when they get taken out. For sure. Case in point, tell me one Eternal that you care about. Uh, Any uh, member of the TV shows like Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, or even fucking Kang when he showed up in Loki. Tell me any so of those that, characters that was that good you care though. About. I like that. But he died. So the point is... There's 50,000 Kangs. Does it matter that Kang died in Loki when you're watching this? It doesn't because, no, because you don't that's, care. That wasn't the point. The point was that Kang is there and it's the explanation of what's to come. Okay, so when Moon Knight shows up in the next movie, you're like, you're going to, oh, oh yeah, Moon, Moon Knight exists. <laughs> Miss Marvel shows up, oh yeah, Miss Marvel. Like there's uh, no. Well, I agree with that. Do you remember when Miss Marvel America is showed up? Definitely showing up in Endgame, and he comes out of the fucking shadows when when uh, yeah. Wanda and uh, and uh, Vision. That was an aw- and dude, my fucking crowd was cheering like crazy. You will never see anything like that in any of these the, fucking movies. The only way you're gonna see something like that is if it's a surprise or if it's a big. I'd say role when it, it, that you didn't that you that you were hoping for, like Deadpool shows up or or. The X Men show up, yeah, or a throwback to Fantastic the A Team. Or, Captain yeah, America sure. shows up, like somebody from the, the from the team you yeah. cared about. And the problem with this is, I don't give a shit about anyone. I don't care who shows up. I don't care who lives. I don't care who dies. Yep. And I feel like I'm now becoming part of the majority. The majority of people don't give a shit about these movies anymore. I would, I would say the m- minority because. At the end of the day, I don't the, think so. The, Seeing as no, how this is the second at, worst reviewed movie, yes. But how much money are they making? I, yeah, and at I the guess end that's of the day, all that matters. That's to them, all man. that matters. It's fucking, and it's sad because this movie has no artistic merit. It's even to the point now where no awards. They no might, nothing. they might yeah. not even give it. Like, why even bother having directors for the next movies? Nobody cared. Nobody was behind the AI camera giving a shit. That. Yeah, it's seven AI do so it. That's, they're already doing it for the scripts. Nobody fucking cared. That's when you say what script. What script? Exactly. Nobody cared about this movie, and it's very obvious. Now, is it worth seeing? Sure. Is it worth going to the theater? No. no. Don't don't expect this huge, amazing movie. It's just it it, it is, and it's a uh, it's an it's it's basically the story of Kang going through. This is fifty six thousand story properties. of a Kang. What would you rate this movie out of ten? Four. Really? That yeah. low? Yeah. It was. Terrible. Not terrible. That's right. I keep on saying terrible, but it's not true. It was uninventive. It was lazy. It was uncared for. It was unartistic. It was pointless. And it was, it meandered. It was, everybody was bored, including the audience. I think it had a point in my rating, 5.5. Wow. That's a. That was awful. Right out of the quantum realm. What? Okay. So. Remember, everybody, it is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. I I hope the Marshmallow Man shows up in one of these. What's Marshmallow Man? Like the Stay Puft? Puft. Yeah. We can't use his... (laughs) It's a Sony property. (laughs) Marsh and or Mallow Man. Stop looking at the, my notes when they come up on my phone. I, I can't see them. Phil my, was looking my at eyes my are horrible. phone. All I see is blur. I know there's, there's saw, words there. Here's my nudes. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil's dad, here's my nudes. Then I'll be glad it's blurred. <laughs> Why? Wow, you've seen it before. That's where it came from. Anyway, we're sorry you've been watching Watch and Complain. <laughs>